them to pursue areas that they're authentically interested in. Um, other things going on in high school. Um, leading a school-wide systematic approach to the instruction of research methods. Um, this began about a year ago. We as a department have worked with English and we sort of had long conversations about how you scaffold really doing good research and research-based writing. But um, within the past year, we've worked systematically to develop actual standards for research at various grade levels and we are now in the process of, of sort of looking at a school at, at where those can be put into place so that we know we are doing a better job school-wide of systematically teaching our kids research. Um, scaffolding the writing process and product development in social studies across four years. Um, I think the department has always recognized that writing in the social studies, like writing in, in science, is a very different animal than perhaps writing in English, and, um, and that it involves um, a different kind of approach, different type of mindset, um, tends to be more um, research-based sometimes, depending on the type of writing. So um, realizing that kids need much more sort of developmental steps in that is something that we're continuing to work with, and we're actually planning to meet with the ELA department this summer to um, make sure that we're on the same page about the language that we're using so that we can help kids, you know, not have to manage multiple departments using multiple terms for the same thing and, um, you know, having a, a better sense of where we're teaching them what skills. Um, finally, driving the curriculum through a global and contemporary lens. Um, I'm not going to lie, that's, that's my passion, that's my thing, but I, I would also say that my colleagues agree that the, the idea of, of our curriculum, you know, being litmus tested with, you know, what, is, what do our kids need to know about the world right now, and does this help inform them about the world that they're living in right now, and if the answer to that question is no, then we probably need to, to push it aside, because um, there's too much going on in the world, our kids have got it. They've got to have the context for for the world that they're living in right now, and so we try to make links to contemporary issues, and we try to drive our curriculum through the lens of students understanding the contemporary world. Um, so, I guess we're going to slide into some district-wide things that are happening. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> so. As far as what we're doing now, we're in, and this is sort of, again, the key, the key phrase is in process. Um, because these are things that we've, you know, some things we have um, done a lot of. Um, other, other items here are things that we, we, we really feel like we need to, to take it to the next level. Um, so developing learning activities and common assessments focused specifically on priority learning goals. You know, obviously we've done that. Um, with the curriculum that we've been working off from over the last several years. However, with the, with the new curriculum, some of the uh, common assessments um, can, can stay, um, but we need to really start to work together um, in, a lot, in, in this aligned curriculum to come up with um, common assessments. I think that's an obvious goal. Um, Engaging in professional development, one of the big pushes um, is, is PLCs um, that will allow, obviously, in, at the high school, you have departments, so um, everybody that's teaching in the history department wants to, wants to work together and, 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 and look at student work and, 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 and assess the, the curriculum and assess the uh, assessments and, uh, and so forth. And so we're, we're, we're engaging in professional uh, development opportunities, and we see that we're definitely going to need to continue to do that. And again, that's probably going to be something that's going to have to be um, taken to, a, to another level with the new curriculum. Shall I continue? Oh, okay. So we alluded to this a little bit. Um, we are this summer going to be meeting with middle school and middle school librarian to talk between ELA social studies, middle school, high school, about a model of um, instructing research that will get us all on the same page with terminology. The Big Six is a program that is um, enormous. It's web-based. It provides um, 
research-based materials to use in the classroom um, to help build students' research skills. So, um, you know, the idea that we're, we're finally really beginning to bring not just the content pieces, but the, the skills pieces, pieces are more of a uh, cross-district cross district, um, uh, spiral is pretty exciting. The last thing that we're, um, well not the last, but the last that we've had documented. Um, we're, one of the things that we're working on, particularly in Pond Cove, just, and they are working on it further, um, is the literacy. We started out with a question of, our scores are pretty good, but there's still that 10, 15% that we're not, we want to reach better than we are. So we've done a lot of work on our literacy program. We've had, um, we had um, people come in and really examine our whole um, literacy program and make us ask questions, how can we improve our literacy program? Well, with all of those questions, we've also decided that we need to spend more time in literacy itself. And so with that, there's always a fear that all the other side um, subjects will fall by the wayside, which is definitely not what we want. Um, so one of the things we want to do is, as I said before, is work very hard on integrating our science and social studies with our literacy. In doing that, we want to make sure that we have all the resources to make, to use, to um, to use the social studies program to also teach our literacy. So we need to make sure that all the children have the level text that they need or the other resources that they can, um, that are at their level so that they can get the information they need. But it all, it all stems from making sure that we can teach them how to read, but we don't want to drop the other subjects too. So that's one of the things we're really focusing on, particularly in Okay, um, the final slide in our presentation calls into mind the understanding of, of the group of social studies teachers, I think district-wide. We understand as a group that there are competing needs for school dollars, and we're very sensitive to that. And in, and in that, I'd like to frame some of the considerations that, 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 that you're going to find that are written throughout the report that are, that are probably very clear. But... Um, and I know you've had time to review both, but there's, before I mention these long-term considerations, I, there's just one uh, very different piece about the social studies curriculum that I would like to call your attention to when you have time to think about it and reflect on it. I think you'll find that it's very rich in skills, and you're going to find that to be a very different approach to a standardized social studies-based curriculum. Having worked on the main learning <laughs> results, and I say that in public like I would say I'm a Yankee fan, <laughs> is is that, that yeah is that social studies teachers including myself believe that students need a rich set of skills in order to operate in the world you really need content but you really need some deep skills whether it's research skills presentation skills understanding you know uh, sources being able to identify literacy skills but, they really are uh, drawn into many areas, and I think the study of social studies lends itself to all sorts of areas of study. And I, I think it's uh, not most difficult, but I think it's always a challenge for, uh, and I've heard this conversation, and, and I, I embrace the conversation between uh, Marianne and Aaron, is that they don't teach social studies all day. They teach all sorts of things all day. And that's very different. And when you're writing curriculum work, and when you're, when you're doing work like this, you really begin to embrace that, and it makes for a very dynamic document. I think when you have time to look deeply at the document, you're going to find it is very rich with all three schools, understanding that there is a lot of skills that are important, and there's a lot of content that's important. Um, I'm going to leave you with a homework assignment tonight, uh, which is different. Uh, and that homework assignment came from uh, Dr. Murphy, and he sent this article about creating social studies standards. It is a fascinating document, and it was at the heart of our discussion three years ago. And it's at the heart of social studies in 2011. So uh, I'll give you that article. You can read on that and reflect on it. And uh, any thoughts you have, you can share them with um, me, or um, you can send them to the uh, Teaching and Learning Committee.
Are we going to be, gra be graded? Yes. Uh oh. So, some long term considerations. Um, Five paragraph essay. Keep in mind, yes, <laughs> keeping in mind, Gretchen will be in charge of specific rules. Uh, keeping in mind that there are some long term considerations and we understand the competing needs. We, we, we give these to you as things to reflect on, to, to don't dismiss, but just to remember them. So, when there's a couple extra bucks lying around, and someone says, gee, what well, can we do with them? Call the social studies teacher. That happens we'll a have, lot, we'll have, actually. We'll, we'll have, have many, many, many ideas for you. The first one is supporting low teacher ratios to attend to differing student needs. I don't have to explain to you because I know you spend a great deal of time understanding not everybody learns the same way. And students has, have very, very different needs in the classroom. And, and, and we respond to that like math does, social studies does, English does. But I think that we need to make sure that we recognize teacher ratios are important. The second consideration is augmenting staff requirements to increase uh, teacher contact time. And that refers to the high school specifically in regards to social studies being a semester long course. And as that is a discussion that needs to grow more and we need to have more dialogue around it, but it's definitely a consideration that we'd like to look into. Uh, the other one is providing and maintaining necessary materials to support curriculum implementation. And, and in social studies, it changes so much. It may not necessarily be a textbook, but it is access to a series of, of whether it's primary sources, secondary sources. And uh, Joyce Bell has done a great job here at the high school. And I know that Mary and Erin have said brave things about the new librarian and the existing librarian. At the, at the middle of elementary school about how, how much help they have asked. They've asked what type of books would be helpful for class. What would enhance the learning for students, all students. And then uh, fourth is providing time for collaboration about instruction, differentiation, assessment, and integration of school and system-wide goals. Again, rooted deeply in the, the, the thoughts of, of creating PLCs, which with, 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 with are the, the vehicle in which you begin to strengthen student learning. There is a lot to be said in the educational world about teaching, but there's an awful lot to be said and sometimes missed about learning. Learning is, the, to me, the fundamental block of, 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 of what really brings a student from struggling to not struggling. And I, I think learning to identify how a student learns is really important. And PLCs lend its arm to identifying kids who struggle because they may not understand the material, or they're struggling in an AP class. They, they, they too are kids who, who need the opportunity to see, oh, yeah, I can do better in my AP class. Just because you're in an AP class doesn't mean that you don't struggle. You struggle the same way you do in a CP class, or you struggle in, in second grade, or you struggle in fifth grade or eighth grade. So I think when we look at providing instruction, we look at about learning, we look about differentiation, and then the key, what do people want to know, do they know? You have to have time to create assessments. Social studies, we, concluded in the group, do not have any national tests that, that you take to know if you are a social studies recipient of great knowledge. And that's where the, that's where the discussion comes from. And but at, at the high school specifically, we have AP courses, and those scores are provided to, uh, to you at the end of the report, and you can look at those. That, that's really the, the means at which we know how well they're doing, and they do really well. There's no doubt about that. Excellent job, no doubt. The flip side of that says we need time to work on some assessments that are specific to a course or specific to a grade. That's where the, the, the amount of time required, and that goes back to what we talked about before, supporting and maintaining time to do that. So before we open it up to um, questions, I want to make two comments. The Yankees are playing the Red Sox at 8 o'clock, <laughs> and the Bruins are playing. <laughs> so if you are any of those fans, you have approximately eight minutes to get all your questions oh, no. <laughs> or submit them. <laughs> so uh, that's where we'll go now to any uh, questions, anything for clarification. We have an audience filled with so much knowledge that if we can't answer it, they certainly can. And we'll have them uh, chime in anywhere they feel the need to make sure that we answer clearly, crisply, and concisely. 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 Excellent. Well, thank you. It was a Fab, it was lovely listening to all of you and all your styles of talking. It's fabulous. Um, does anyone have any questions on the board? I have a quick 
quick question, a couple of quick questions. Um, number one, this, this was wonderful. Thank